looking for me after we get out of this, because you know we're going to get out of this. Um, when, when God comes looking for me after I get out of this, is God going to find me faithful or is he going to find me faithless? this morning to the book of Philippians. We're going to be looking at chapter 1, uh, verses 21 through 30. Uh, and I'll be taking it from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, for, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is the evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now here I still have. Mm, it's waiting right there. Uh, I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, the reason why I'm hanging on. The reason why I'm hanging on. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your people. Come, thy servant bless. Come, give thy word success, spirit of holiness on us to say, God, grant me that anointing that makes preaching possible. And you get every ounce of the glory from it, for it all belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, our Savior, people of God said, Amen. 
It's now been six months since we have gone virtual and the virus is not through with this world yet. Uh, it's been a while now. We, we've, we're approaching this point, the threshold point. People are getting antsy, they're getting tired. Uh, they're, they're, the defenses are low. And, and now the virus is still alive and kicking. It's real. And while I was trying to relax, uh, I came across a cartoon depicting the Grim Reaper making, marking off days uh, on his 2020 calendar. And I figured, what a grim cartoon. But that depicts where we are today, mentally, spiritually, and physically. The unemployment rate is at a high. The vaccine is still being developed. Social unrest plagues the nation. And the only way we can safely gather is virtually. It's easy to lose hope if you don't have faith. And the question that is asked among people of faith and people of even lukewarm faith is, why did this happen? That's the question that, that is asked quite often. Uh, what do you say on why this has happened to us? And when children, uh, when children were asked this question on Zoom in my son's virtual classroom, a few months ago, this is what I heard. I heard from the children. Some children responded like this. We, we had children who responded with a theological response. They said, God did this because he was tired of sin. Uh, we had children who responded with a scientific response and said, this happened because bats spread the disease. We, we had children on the Zoom call who responded with the government's response saying this is a Chinese disease. And as I listened to these children, eight, nine years old, respond, I was in complete shock. And I said a little prayer for every one of those children. And I said, I pray that they will have a better understanding of life and it will not shape how they view each other and view God. Because children echo what they hear adults say, and they echo the behavior adults exhibit. Mm, yes, yes. So the question poised to these young children, it, it was, why did this happen? Uh, and, and, and what I'm suggesting to you this morning is maybe we have been focusing on the wrong question. The question is not, why did this happen? But, but the question should be, what does my faith look like in the midst of a crisis? Oh, God, come on now. Um, because when God comes looking for me after we get out of this, because you know he, we're going to get out of this. Um, when, when God comes looking for me after I get out of this, is God going to find me faithful or is he going to find me faithless? Uh, am I going to be the same as I went in or will I be better coming out of it? Mm, God help me, Jesus. So one thing remains for sure that if we are faithless, he remains faithful mm, for he cannot deny himself. He is a faithful God who keeps his covenant and his steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments for thousands of generations. Though my health may fail me, though my knees may give up, though I may lose jobs, though I may lose friends, I am convinced that God will never give up on me. Why? Because he hung out with me when I was at my lowest, when I was broke, when I didn't have, when I didn't have any change in my pocket. God hung out with me. He, he stood in the gap with me when, I, when people were dying around me. He comforted me. The air that I breathe, the car that I drive, the food in the fridge did not come by my hand. It came from God's hand. So every time I wake up in the morning, I say morning by morning, new mercy I see all that I needed I had have provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me he's faithful unto me even when I'm not faithful to him somebody said this is the reason why I'm hanging on uh, this is the reason why I'm hanging on don't you give up right now because 
You're feeling tired and you're feeling weary. Don't you give up because there's a reason that goes deeper why you should hang on because God has got you out of much worse. Sure, this might be the worst uh, catastrophe we have seen in our lifetime, but look how God is keeping us and watching over us. Don't you give up on God because God doesn't give up on you. Huh. And I love you, not because of you, uh, it's because of the one who made you. Mm. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all not ready for me this morning? What y'all looking at me for like that? Just give God the glory. Uh, because God loves us so much um, that, that despite our, our frailties, despite our off-courseness, God loves us. Oh, God, help me. All right. Uh, so so let, let me help you out here. In every generation... Matter of fact, in every written book of the Bible, each generation goes through a crisis. In every book of the Bible, you pretty much, uh, besides some of the poetry books, whatever. But uh, and, and I applaud everyone who's watching this right now because you've made it this far. Six months ago, you didn't know that we will be in this this long, but you made it this far. Oh, uh, six months and you haven't lost your mind. Six months and you're still uh, functioning. Six months and you still have hope. Six months and you still have faith. And you learned that God didn't remove the pain, but he got you through the pain. He enabled you to endure. And somebody say hallelujah. God set it up in such a way that he said, I I want to set you up so that you can endure it. I'm not going to rescue you from it, but I'm going to teach you how to endure it so when you come out of it, you're stronger, you're better, and you're wiser. So, I've learned in life that the more uncomfortable the situation, the more God uses you. Oh, we're well, about to get quiet up in here. Uh, uh, God has to put you in uncomfortable situations to grow you. Uh, <laughs> he'll put you in places and surround you with people to grow you. Uh, I, I'd rather God do it than Satan tries to do it. Because see, Satan is not trying to grow you. He's trying to destroy you. Uh, so, so God will put you around people to, to help grow you. Uh, and, and so Paul is called to preach the gospel and, and he's on house arrest for doing what he's called to do. He's arrested for doing what God called him to do. Now, you know, if you were looking outside and looking in, you would say, well, obviously he did something wrong. Because, see, I hear that comment a lot. When people go through stuff in life, and it comes a lot to, a lot of the times from church folk. They say, I don't know what he or she did that, that you know, they must have did something wrong. That's why God is doing it. The devil is a liar. What did Paul do wrong to deserve being on house arrest? He did nothing but following Jesus. Uh, so Paul is dealing with emotional pain. He, he's dealing with physical pain and he's also dealing with spiritual confusion. Uh, so Paul now is on house arrest and he's awaiting trial from the emperor Nero. And Nero is known, he has a legacy, he has a history of, set, uh, of killing Christians, especially those who are bold in the faith. All right. <laughs> Uh, but Paul is a smart guy. He's much smarter than me. And, and, and he realizes the odds are not in his favor. And watch this. It, it's a good chance that he's going to die. It's a good chance he's in prison. Uh, he knows how these things turn out. It's a good chance he's, he's going to die. And in this text, we see Paul contemplating if it's better for him to be alive or if it's better for him to be dead. All right. Watch this. He, he's not... Hear me, he's not contemplating suicide. All right, if I live in Christ, I can. no, he's not contemplating suicide. He, he's contemplating on which would have the stronger effect of the gospel. All right, uh, this, this way, watch this. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, 
That means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. So, so the gain that he's talking about is not merely a, a heavenly reward from the master, but it's a promotion of the gospel from his fearless martyrdom for Christ. So he, he says to, to live in Christos is dying in Kurdos. You, you hear the words uh, Christos, Kurdos. In the Greek, uh, um, Christos is Christ. Kurdos means gain. But it, it doesn't just mean gain. It, it means this. It means that I'm gaining something in service. So Christ is magnified by the apostle's death because both in living and in death, he is dedicated to the service of the Lord. What do you mean? Regardless of where Paul is, he is joyful to spend his life in glad service for the Lord. He says if, if he lives, He's serving. If he's died, he's still serving Christ. Watch this. And he says in verse 23, I'm pressed between the two. So, so watch this. So I want I want how, how much the reason why I'm hanging on is because I'm pressed to hang on in the present. Y'all with me? Somebody say with I'm pressed to hang on in the present. I didn't hear you. Say it again. I'm pressed. To hang on in the present. Y'all didn't write it down? Write it down for you. All right. So I I'm pressed to hang on in the present because I, I know life has been throwing me so many blows, so much stuff coming at me that, that it's easier for me just to give up. It's easier for me just to throw in the towel. But I'm pressed. God, God's pressing me because for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of preaching his word, for the sake of ministry, for the sake that my job is not finished yet. Then I got to hang on in the present. I got to hang on. No matter how hard it gets, I got to hang on. I got to hang on. No matter how much pain I got to endure, I got to hang on. So the, the heavier weight is to remain here. It's more heavier for me to be here and to stay here than for me to go and be with him. So, so it's easy for me to give up, but I'm pressed to hang on in the present for your sake. So he contemplates this. He, he's having some suffering. He said, I'm pressed to hang on. I don't know which one for me to Christ. Alive. And then he regains his confidence in verse 25. It's not even a second. He's writing this letter to the church of Philippi. And he's writing this. And in a matter of seconds of him writing, he, he's, he changes. And he says, he says here, uh, I, I have assurance that the Holy Spirit is going to push me through to advance the gospel. Watch this in the text. In verse 25, he, he, he looks at this text and he, he recognizes, he said, since I'm convinced of this, since I am convinced of this, watch this, uh, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting of Christ Jesus when I come to you again. So he says in a second of, of, of being able to, to be pressed in the present, the press to hang on, he, he gets this confidence that I can see progress in the future. Woo, this is a good word for y'all. Y'all playing with me this morning. Uh, I, somebody say I can see progress. So the reason why I'm hanging on is that I, I'm, I'm pressed. Come on now, help me, Jesus. I, I'm pressed to hang on in the present, but I'm also able to see progress in the future. Now, if you don't have any faith or you don't have any hope, then you, you can't see anything. You, some people, I'm arguing with somebody on Instagram uh, about, uh, you know, they say, I read the whole Bible. The Bible's a sham. I say, you know, the problem is with you. Anybody can read the Bible, but God is the only one that can unlock it when you read it with a sincere heart. You don't come to the Bible. If you come to the Bible as an atheist and read it, it's just a book for you. But for us, it's life because the Bible is just a tool to lead us to the spiritual authority of Christ. Christ is the key. So Paul says, he says, I, I can see progress in the future. And he has this deepening joy and this enlargement of faith. And in a moment, Paul looks Forward to seeing their progress of joy in the faith. 
he, he said, I, I look forward to see how you're going to get through this. Mm. Man, I wish. Woo, I, I, somebody said, I'm getting through this. Somebody said, I'm getting through this. I, my body's going to get through this. My, 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 I'm going to get through this financial situation. I'm going to get through this health crisis. I mean, I'm going to get through this. And I get through this by having faith in Christ, by seeing a future. And I look forward to helping and seeing my neighbor be blessed. Ooh, I want to see you have joy. If you have joy, it helps me hang on. Mm, 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 mm. Hang on. It helps me hang on. It helps me have a reason to hang on. If I could just see somebody who said, look, I've been through what you've been through. I, I'm just going to press my way. Sometimes you just need a buddy. You just need somebody to say, look, we're going to go through this together. And if you don't have a buddy, you got a friend in Jesus. And I'm telling you, you can lean on Jesus when you get in trouble. So he, he says, I can see progress in the future. Uh, the reason why I'm hanging on, because I can see things moving forward. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> uh, now, uh, I, I was trying to, trying to work this thing out the best way I could. And uh, I, I looked at one other part, passage of this text that, that had me a little confused. And, and I, I want to read this to you. And I, I want you to hear this uh, and see if this works out for you. Uh, just look at verse 29. It says, for he has graciously granted you, watch this, the privilege, the privilege of not only believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now here I still have. <laughs> so not only if I'm hanging on, what <laughs> uh, I'm pressed to hang on to the present and I, I can see progress in the future. But God granted me the privilege to suffer. All right. Y'all y'all just why are you looking at me like that? Are you looking at me. All right. He, he granted me the privilege to suffer. Well, how is suffering a privilege, Pastor? Well, let me help you out here. Because the greater the battle, the greater the victory. <laughs> and, and God made you for this kind of battle. He, God thought that you were strong enough to suffer for his sake. Mm. He could have left you weak and feeble. He could have left you down by the wayside. But you have to suffer to show strength to a faithless world that despite all that you may go through, you are going to march on. Mm, God help me. Look, there is nothing that will separate me from the love of Jesus. And because nothing will separate me, I can march on and I can suffer for him. In, in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, verse 18, Paul connects our sharing of suffering with the sharing of Christ's glory. You will never be able to share in the glory of Christ unless you share in the suffering of Christ. You got to pick up a cross in order to get a crown. And when we, when we appear before the Lord, I believe he won't look for our medals. He won't look for our accolades. But I believe he's going to look for our scars. They might not always be physical scars. But it's the trials and the suffering that we go through that deepen our lives. That causes us to have compassion. Uh, that causes us to care for the orphan and to look out for the widow. And God wants us to be faithful. So he grants us the privilege. He says, you want my glory? You want the manifestations of God? I'm going to give you the privilege to suffer for me. Oh, God help me. So if you are suffering, mm, God, Jesus help me. 
I'm about to shout on my own thing. If you are suffering, God is giving you the glory. He's giving you a little taste of his glory. Now, it depends on if we, we cry and complain while we're suffering or do we have joy and faith in the spirit while we're suffering because God wants to see how are you going to suffer in me. He wants to see how much glory you can handle. God give me the glory. Some people, only they just want to see people. Uh, they just want to see people with the glory. But anybody who has glory on their life, anybody who's been anointed, who's been touched by God had to go through suffering or in is going through suffering right now. I'm talking to somebody right now who's looking and saying, look, pastor, you already read in my entire life. I've been suffering. I don't know how I've been making it, but God made a way out of no way, and I know his glory is coming around my house. Oh, so I'm going to keep praising God even when the situation gets worse. Y'all didn't hear me. I, I, I'm going to keep giving God the glory even when things get bad. Mm. Matter of fact, uh, when, when things get bad, that's when I break out into a bad praise. That's when I break out into a big bad praise. That's when I break out into a big bountiful praise. That's when I break out into a big bountiful blessing of praise. Because that's when God wants to see, am I going to suffer with him to get his glory? Oh, God sees you in your struggle. But I want to tell you something just in case you forgot. Just in case you didn't know that the Lord is powerful. Oh, the Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord is a battle axe. The Lord is my strength. Oh, I need to make it. Somebody say, I need to make it. I need to make it. God is going to help you pay this thing off. I need to make it. God is going to help you get out of this. I need to make it. God is going to help you move your limbs and bend your knee. Why do I need to make it? I need you to make it because God says, be of good courage. He says, for you, living is Christ and dying is gain. I want you to learn a lesson from Paul. Hang on to the present. I want you to have the privilege of suffering, but I also, I want you to recognize Recognize that God is going to bless you even in your present situation. So wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Fill your faith up with faith. Fill it up. Fill it up with faith. Fill your faith up with faith, not with fear. Uh, and I, I, I'm just, I, I see progress in this future. I see, I see faith coming my way. I know I got somebody fighting for me. Somebody I probably can't see. But there's an invisible reality that God has our back. So no matter what situation we're in, we learn how to be content. Because we know what it's like to have a little bit. We know what it's like to have much. But through it all, I've learned the secret of being well fed. And that is that God's grace is sufficient. It's sufficient. The reason why I'm still hanging on is because I need to hang on to the present. <laughs> I need to see, I see your progress in the future. And I also, I want you to have the privilege of suffering for Christ. Will you suffer for Christ? Will you go into battle? Go into battle. Use your weapon of prayer and give God the glory and say, no matter what gets thrown my way, I will bless the Lord at all times.